Market is still dealing with the aftermath of Jerome Powell closing the door on March. Equities are down. Bonds still pretty well bid, though. Dollar did flip green. we got Jeff Kleintop and Cooper Howard here with us. Great team to talk some FOMC and more. Cooper's a director and fixed income strategist, and Jeff Kleintop's the chief global investment strategist at Charles Schwab. Afternoon, guys. Great to see you both. Uh, Jeff, I'm reading some of your writing from today, and uh, it seems like an appropriate place to start because you talk about the mad lib world of central bankers having to pick every adjective and verb. And So what do you think of the words Powell chose? Yeah, so he did a lot of what other central bankers have done and pushed back a little bit, right? Uh, Mad Libs is that that game, of course, where you pick those adjectives and verbs and nouns to substitute for blanks in the story, and the outcome can often be pretty wild. We didn't see too much of a wild reaction in the market today. We got kind of a typical central banker uh, reaction or central bank day in the market's reaction. But the important thing is the words that were chosen, particularly with regard to when the first rate hike might be, were pushed out pointing to maybe sometime this summer when they would gain enough confidence, at least a few months from now, to feel that inflation was headed reliably towards 2%. That is similar to what we heard from the ECB's Lagarde, from the Bank of of Canada, similar to probably what we're going to hear from the Bank of England tomorrow. The markets, though, seem to be ignoring it generally. I know we got a little bit of a reaction here in bond stocks, a little bit in the currency today, but the markets are still pricing in Perhaps as soon as a a March or an April start to rate cuts, that seems a little bit early, given what central bankers are telling the markets. And that means they need to be a little bit more forceful in their word choice going forward, maybe leading markets to be a little bit disappointed here in the weeks ahead as they clarify their their comments. Bond bulls refuse to let March go, holding on to... uh... 37 percent ish right now we've been tracking it basically live all afternoon it'll come up in a second again uh cooper does uh jerome powell endanger the economy by not cutting as soon as the market would like him to you know i don't necessarily think that he endangers the economy by shutting or not um, by not cutting as soon as the market would like him to. I think that if you look at kind of what he said during his press conference, he highlighted that we're in a relatively strong economy right now. If you look at unemployment, that's been below 4% for about two years now. Inflation has been trending down towards a 2% mandate. Growth has been holding up relatively okay. It is expected to slow, but so far so good on that front. Uh, The reference to Lagarde and the other global central bankers, I think, is important, Jeff, because Christine Lagarde was pretty direct in her pushback against her own bond market, but then they kind of rallied through it anyway. But I don't know, it feels like Powell took a little bit of a cue from that because he was fairly explicit by the end of the press conference. Yeah, pretty clear. Uh, Although, again, I think the market just continues to push back here. And so I think the market, both in Europe and in in the U.S. and, and many other countries, are expecting maybe more downside to inflation in the near term than central bankers are pricing into their forecasts. Many of them have updated their forecasts. Many of them have yet to do so. But the point is that the market is betting much more downside here, and that's in the face of additional conflict in the Middle East, rising shipping costs. Oil is down today, but it's been up so far this year. And so there are a number of inflation pressures here that would suggest that maybe inflation would not be receding even more rapidly than maybe had been expected weeks ago, but in fact, maybe a little bit more stable. So uh, it's a real bet here on the direction of inflation over the next couple of prints. And I don't know who's going to win here, the market or the central bankers. Okay. You know, to hear him say in response to the question, March is not likely, I can't really remember a time he was that explicit cooper because he was intimating throughout the entire q a that they weren't ready in march and it's kind of like he broke and was just like look leave me alone guys we're not going in march you know i definitely agree with that one hum i think that that was really kind of the big question on everybody's mind coming in is is march live is it not mar is not march not going to be live and i expected him to kind of flirt around the issue maybe drop a little nugget here or there but Going back to Jeff's Mad Lib, if you were to pick out a verb, I mean, you could pick out slammed, shut, any of the above, because he explicitly came out and said that, um, in his opinion, it doesn't seem like March is likely. I think he left the door slightly open, but I would say very, very slightly. So maybe it bounced back a little bit after he slammed it shut. Um, So I thought that that was kind of the big key takeaway of this meeting. What in credit, Cooper, should we be watching to know if we're if you know if we're gonna be okay? Because there was a little bit of a credit scare in the financial and bank space today. 
Yeah, a little bit of a scare in the banking sector today. Um, it kind of shows that maybe we're not necessarily through the worst of it. Maybe there are going to be other things that will pop up. I think if you look at this situation, as of now, it appears to be a relatively isolated event. Um, we are still maintaining a preference, or I shouldn't say necessarily say a preference, but we still think that investment grade corporate bonds are an attractive opportunity. We see an upward sloping yield curve, so we often hear from some of our clients they don't want to be stepping out into an inverted sloping yield curve. That's not necessarily the case for the investment grade corporate bond market. However, I would say that spreads are relatively tight. Um, that's both for IG and high yield. So it does lend towards a preference of maybe treasuries if you're a little bit more of a conservative investor. Okay. Jeff, uh, as we look forward to the rest of this week, we've also got the ECB, uh, or Bank of England rather. What are you looking for from them? Well, they'll likely hold rates steady and push the market, try to push the market towards a summer start rate or start date for, for, for the start of rate cuts. But you could see one member dissent. There might be one or two dovish dissents from, uh, from a consensus around keeping rates stable, which would you know lean in the direction of maybe an internal shift towards rate cuts. This is a bigger deal at the at the Bank of England. Inflation in, in England has been higher than the rest of the world. It's been slower to come down. Uh, and and just probably not on path towards 2% within the next six months or so. So that is probably more realistically a start of rate cuts is somewhere in the summer months. But the market's still pressing in a start to Q2. So we'll see if, again, their central bankers try to push the markets back on that start of rate cuts, giving themselves a little bit more flexibility over the months to come. All right, let's end with the fundamentals. We got jobless claims tomorrow. We got employment on Friday, Cooper. Powell seemed to be generally happy. He said the state of the labor market is still pretty strong, even though it's weakened. So what range should we be rooting for here to keep things on the right track? You know, so the market's expecting a gain of 185,000 jobs. Um, unemployment rate's supposed to stay at about 3.8%. So that should look as a relatively strong labor market or a continued strong labor market. Now, the 185,000 job adds, that tends to be a little bit lower than where we've seen recently. So it does show that maybe it's slowing a little bit. But overall, the labor market still continues to be relatively strong. I think it's interesting that this um, Fed, they do have a dual mandate, but it seems like they've been singularly focused on just looking at what's inflation coming out at. So I think for the market, that's probably a little bit more of an important factor. But yes, the jobs report on Friday is also going to be a potential for some volatility there. All right. Great stuff, guys. Nice analysis of today's uh, information. Good preview for the rest of this week. Jeff Kleintop, Cooper Howard playing a little Mad Libs with us. Fun.